Okay, so today, let me switch this light off. Today we're going to uh, put the pieces together, hmm? try to put some of the pieces together at least. Um, so uh, we, last time we learned a bit about uh, front-end programming, so JavaScript, uh, and we have the REST uh, servers that we are now learned uh, to, to implement uh, no, to uh, serve some services uh, on the network. So uh, today we are trying to create a front-end application, so an application running in the browser in JavaScript uh, that is able to use uh, REST services from another server okay, to um, implement uh, some backend code. Okay? So the first uh, uh, step would be to uh, create no, a better uh, Flask uh, project, front-end project, uh, that will include uh, uh, jQuery, uh, the jQuery library that we, we, we assigned as a reading for this week, uh, so that we can be faster in developing uh, stuff, in, uh, especially in JavaScript. It will uh, take care of ma many details of the basic JavaScript language. And in doing that, uh, I will also introduce uh, this extension in the Flask uh, server, in the Flask platform. Uh, one of the many extensions in Flask is the Bootstrap uh, extension. So it will, uh, you already know Bootstrap from the CSS, how to use it directly. Uh, in particular, in Flask, uh, there is an extension that will uh, automatically let you include Bootstrap and jQuery and customize the, the template for you, okay? So basically, uh, we just need to install the Flask uh, Bootstrap uh, package in our uh, application, okay? And it will include, it will uh, customize uh, um, a, a default template from which uh, we can uh, define our web pages uh, that uh, automatically will include uh, the Bootstrap code from the network uh, with all the addresses on the, uh, all the information that we need. So basically, the steps uh, are installing the extension, we'll do that uh, together now, and uh, from our application also importing this bootstrap class. So the flask underscore bootstrap is the package name, the internal package name, while the, the one to install is flask dash bootstrap, it's a bit different, but uh, never mind. And uh, the operation that we need to do is uh, after we create the application, uh, we call this uh, bootstrap uh, function on top of the application. So what we are doing, this is the normal uh, call for creating a new uh, Flask application. So in, uh, in our code from last time, we already have it here. Uh, in the app, we have the, we created the Flask uh, code, uh, the Flask application app uh, on which to add all the, all the routes and everything, okay? The next step is uh, uh, to apply the bootstrap class, uh, calling the bootstrap class on top of this application. What does, it, what does it do? It will modify the app by adding some method, some information, and in particular by um, making this uh, template available. So there's an implicit template, bootstrap base, that predefines all the bootstrap styles in our, uh, available for our template. So uh, after we modify the main application like this, uh, we should also modify our page templates uh, that right now are just raw HTML files, uh, like we had here in the index file. It's just a HTML uh, body and so on, so it's no, uh, directly in HTML. Uh, we can inherit, use the inheritance between templates, uh, inherit from the bootstrap template itself. So all the details about uh, HTML uh, body and so on are already taken care of by the base template, uh, and we only need to customize it. So basically, we will use for the first time the inheritance between templates, uh, where we have uh, uh, this mechanism uh, defined with blocks. Uh, 
so in in a so we are creating our pages extending from this template how does it work this template already defines uh, uh, the skeleton of a page with some named blocks in different parts we extend it means that we copy this and we have the possibility if we want to redefine some of the blocks so whenever we inherit from a template we have a copy of that template uh, and uh, we can define not the whole con uh, container but only the contents uh, of some specific blocks for example in the booster template uh, we have a title block uh, which will be inserted in the head section that we can use to define the title tag of the page since we are not writing the head anymore by ourselves there's a way of, in of injecting information into the title section uh, there may be and the important part is the contents which is a block uh, inside the body where we should put all the page there so actually we are saying to the bootstrap to the booster template do all the container for us and we will put the content in this content block hmm? and there are also so the the structure of this page is something like this if we want a navigation bar there will be also this middle section otherwise we just inherit from the template define the title of the page and later define the content of the page and within this content we can use all the bootstrap classes all the bootstrap styles uh, we don't need to include bootstrap or include jquery or whatever do all the all the uh, source inclusions in, in the in the head of the page hmm? we just uh, uh, write the content and this block mechanism uh, is much mm, much wider because we we have uh, uh, several types uh, of blocks that can be redefined so the most important one was content uh, but we can also have uh, styles if you want to add your own custom styles or scripts uh, we will need that uh, if we want to add additional scripts uh, uh, for our, for example our javascript to the page hmm. um, okay so let's try the, to do a first step uh, of converting uh, and, and the nice part is that installing uh, bootstrap will also pull jquery uh, uh, as a library so we don't need to include it explicitly so for doing this uh, uh, we just have to take our application and uh, from import the bootstrap uh, so from flask uh, bootstrap import bootstrap flask underscore bootstrap import bootstrap of course this is red because flash bootstrap is not in this project but we can install don't you find it okay so let's go to the settings let's go the long way flask Ah, okay because the, there's the difference between the underscore and the dash so the uh, id cannot find it flash dash bootstrap somewhere here this one flash bootstrap so we can include it okay and now this error is solved so we know we now have this bootstrap class uh, then we can use to give special powers to our application so from the application point of view this is all we need to do and now we can work better in the template uh, already having all the bootstrap classes so we go to the so the only modifications are line two here and line six there 
button i didn't do anything else while on the template uh, i will uh, simplify it very much because i just need to extend first of all i need to extend the bootstrap slash base template base.html template so this uh, already transforms my page into the general container and so i don't need to write all this boilerplate code any uh, code anymore i only need to define the title for example so let's write let's put it down and then we'll delete it later so we define the title block title you see when we want to insert something uh, here in the head of the title in the head section inside the title uh, tag we just redefine so we inherited the template with, a, with an empty title there was a block title with an empty value we redefine that block uh, with a different value in the subclass here this template is a subclass uh, and so my task list uh, will be the new title and block right and block is the syntax So just to have a look at what happens, of course I need to delete this and all of this, all the body, and the body is replaced by blocks content, right? Content. Up to the end. and block so let's try to run it again and have a look at what the page looks like well the page is similar you see that the font has changed because now we are using partially using the bootstrap styles if we have a look at the source you see that all this page this part uh, is already we deleted it from our file so it's de derived from the template uh, also this meta tag uh, and we sling he here is defined by the template add and body and the only content that we have uh, is has been inserted here and then this whole content block which is here has been inserted in this part here at the end of the content the template injects uh, a couple of scripts uh, to load uh, you see jquery and bootstrap js that are already injected at the end of the page uh, after our content after the content block uh, comes the script block and then body html and uh, that, that is closed so we don't need to take care of any of these details only work inside content of course uh, since we are working with bootstrap uh, the content block is only part of the page it's our duty to make a sensible bootstrap page so for example we make we must have uh, in the bootstrap rule a, a big div containing uh, all the content with class container remember so div class container should contain all the code to give proper margins basically and to have the possibility of, of uh, measuring the content so uh, I'm sorry I need to restart the application and reload the page so that you see that the margin before was zero and it was not very nice to see and uh, 
uh, all the uh, every booster page should be put uh, every booster booster content in a page should be put inside a container a container div a div with class container to give the proper styles uh, to the to the real uh, content of, of, my, of my page okay so this is something easy for us to do and the next step uh, would be to get rid of uh, this uh, scripts call here because there's a, we, we don't want to have the script here I, we want to put it automatically at the end of the page without with together with the other scripts so we can define redefine the scripts tag at the end of the body so we could put here our script scripts block sorry block scripts and block and when we put our scripts our script there and the proper place is at the end the nice part is that you can move this uh, block here wherever you want you can put it at the top of the or at the bottom will uh, this block will be inserted injected always at the same point at the right point okay since we are not con building the page anymore we are just redefining the content of some placeholders some of these placeholders that already have a fixed position into the template hmm? so we can put it where we find it easier so if you run it again we should notice or not let's see well we should notice that th there's that we have a problem because right now we have our script uh, but we don't have the jquery and booster scripts anymore okay why well it should be written here this block contains all the scripts so this instead of a, a title or a content where is that content yeah that were initially empty so we can redefine them and put our content in uh, the scripts was not empty at the beginning to start with it contained the links to bootstraps and uh, and so we need to before adding our script uh, we need to uh, you know conserve all the previous ones mm -hmm. so it's something like if i'm not wrong uh, we need to call the super class of this block mm -hmm. so it's a super no uh, i don't remember to be honest i don't remember I remember something about super but it's not with percent sign it's just a, a, a call here so we can ex we can replace the content of a block or we can add some our content to an existing block there okay so we may decide whether we want to include our scripts before or after the others I would prefer after like that so I'm not like this but remember the difference between the person sign is a um, ginger template di directive and the double brace uh, is escaping to Python so this is a this block is a ginger command this super is the, the call of the super function in Python directly hmm? okay let's try to reformat this if we can okay so right now we should have the page the complete page as we like it here the page didn't change but the scripts are now complete okay so next step uh, would be to use uh, start using jquery instead of uh, simple javascript to do our operations 
and in, in using JavaScript uh, we should uh, gradually delete these references there so uh, um, we try to separate the creation of the HTML code from the definition of the dynamic content of the page so right now the HTML and the JavaScript are too much interlinked the, Java, the HTML code needs to know about the, um, the names of the JavaScript functions and where and when they have to be called. Hmm? And this is painful. So I would prefer doing the other way around. How? Well, we delete this uh, event handler from, from here, from the HTML code. So we write an HTML code which is clean but structured so the, it's clean it doesn't have all the even tenders all the details uh, but it's a, it should have a very clear structure in terms of divs in terms of uh, classes and ids mm? so it's something that should be easy to query from the point of view of the dom uh, of the location of the element so we will put extra maybe uh, also empty or invisible divs uh, division for separating maybe the title from the content from the notes and so on so that these divs will have an id and will be easy to find from the javascript code so the html developer should mark uh, you know give a sort of semantic marking to the page this section that section and so on and then will be up to javascript to register all the uh, event handlers and do all the detailed stuff so let's try to do that so also this on click uh, we, we remove everything here so we have this container we have the title okay and then we can have a, for example a div here with id uh, li the list so that we remember that this part contains the list of tasks okay the task list maybe let's try to be more explicit so this it's an id so it will be easy to catch from the javascript code from the dom i don't need to know exactly where the i can later move this list uh, in different parts of the page but the id will always be the same okay and this uh, will con this div will contain a list uh, with many items and i can remove these event handlers so uh, here and we have it again a simple link uh, as we had before knowing javascript because we want to add it later hmm? and so on and uh, okay this was the warning the block for the warning sign now we have bootstrap so we can also add uh, uh, a class uh, for styling the warning uh, of this div hmm? that will come out in red colors with the, with the right boot bootstrap styles okay but this is easy and then we have a form again in bootstrap we can have we can mark it saying that it's a form and uh, and this will be form control we will mark it with bootstrap later so first uh, let's work on the list and then on the form okay okay so let's reformat it again so right now we deleted all traces of the intender from this page so we made the page stupid again okay it's not interactive anymore so we can go to the JavaScript code, to our script. Well, let's move this function a bit down. And uh, use jQuery to insert these, these event lenders again. First of all, I how to map an event lender to to an HTML element. In jQuery, the 
you know the method of thinking is always the same find an element and find something to do with that element so first of all what do we need to find in order to modify them we need to find uh, these links and where are these links uh, so we, we reason in terms of uh, selectors how could I select those elements using CSS well it would be an a inside of an li inside a ul inside the div with uh, the task list so if I want to find this element this a I can search for the div uh, the task list and then find the links uh, included in li included in ul inside there so we can select uh, the children of the children of this block or we could decide to give a class to these links uh, just for finding them easier okay this we are not saying what to do with this link we, we are just making it easier to find So uh, once we decide how to select that element, we can create a jQuery selector for finding them. So we have a div with ID, uh, sorry, how was it called? Uh, the task list that we contain a UL, that we contain li that will contain i a sorry so in jquery you know dollar is the jquery function and uh, it can select one or more elements that match any css expression so if i'm not wrong it should match all the links that we need i don't like it too much because it depends uh, on the HTML of the page. Because if a designer will decide that, oh, I don't like the UL, LI, I, only, I will make a table or will make a different form of list, uh, this selector will not work anymore. So maybe it's probably better to give a class to forget about this intermediate step, whatever we have inside, uh, any link with class uh, delete, uh, delete link or just delete inside a d with the task list uh, is selected remember that we but in this case we don't we need to specify that this is not a direct child but it's an indirect child of the and uh, i if i'm not wrong is the booster uh, css selectors remember we can have this element uh, elements uh, the space al is already working like this all the p elements inside this div and which is different from this greater sign where the p is uh, it is immediate parent so just to div p if we have a div with another div inside with another list with another and when then we have a p it will be selected here if we have this greater sign only if the p is immediately inside the div will be selected it will be selected so this form is already what we are looking for okay this selector already does what we want an a with class delete somewhere inside this div so i need to add a class delete to the link why do i put a class and not an id because it's repeated huh? i couldn't put i can't put an id here id equal delete 
because this element is repeated many times so this, this these links plural will all have the same id and it's not allowed for two elements in the same page to have the same id 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 should be unique so if i want i want to mark some elements that are um, similar in form and in function but there, there are more than one so the, this the, this task list is only one but the uh, links here are more than one so i need to use a class and not a specific id okay so i could also have uh, forgot about this div and just saying okay all the links mark with delete but if i want imagine i can uh, there can there could be in the same page another link uh, with class delete uh, on which we want to do something different so it's better to scope it oh sorry to scope it and say okay only in this part of the page i want to search for this element so these are the elements and then and then we want to attach an event handler what was it to the over or mouse over remember event so select and then modify this is jquery philosophy select is find a selector that will select not one but a list of elements in one in one block and so it will apply a modification to the whole list uh, or to, whole, to all the elements that have, that have been selected so you can do add classes change styles uh, and so on or add uh, elements or modify whatever you want in particular you can add uh, on mouse you can add event handler for example on mouse over handler and then you specify which function you want to use as a mouse over handler so in this case it was worn on delete the problem is that we have uh, this delete text uh, well we need to modify something more so what oh so no, no, not here not like that or oh, i need to write a function name um, Uh, be careful with the parentheses i made a mistake before in this case i'm saying the handler for the mouse over event of all those elements that have been selected will be this function the function is not called here only its name is saved and the function will be called when the events come different if we am putting some parentheses here I'm calling the function here so the function will be executed once there and the results of the function whatever it is will be used as an event handler of course this function will not return a function it will not return an event handler will return nothing because there's no return statement and so we are not attaching any event handler at, at all there so we are saving the name of the function that will later will be called And this function, let's delete this ugly, ugliness, uh, will modify the text uh, of another div in the page. In JavaScript, uh, we had to take care of how to find uh, that div, where to put the text, and so on. With jQuery, it's all much easier because it's only the, the div with ID warning. So it's much easier. In this case, what will what does this warn and delete function need to do? Well, it just needs to select the div with ID warning and add the text <coughs> with the careful.
I have a CSS selector that could be used to find an element. I call the jQuery function with the selector. Will, it will return me a jQuery object that refers to the list, uh, in this case it's only one, the list of one HTML element, DOM element. And they can apply some modification. So in, uh, in, J in, um, in JavaScript, it would be inner HTML, which is a different attribute. In this case, should be text or inner text. I don't remember. Probably text. That's it. So everything is much easier. So let's see if it works. It's easy to find portion of the page and modify them. So, does it work? Reload. No, it does. Why? Let's see. Ah, of course. Sorry. Um, so let's make it put a breakpoint point here and have a look. We execute this task, this uh, statement here. Okay, and then we can try to inspect. Uh, this element to see whether it had um, selection select a dot delete now what is my selector here sorry here the process dot delete so it looks like it didn't register so let me take one so There is no re there is no so let me try it again. I know what's wrong, but uh, Okay, so uh, le let me, I, I hope to be able to, to avoid this step, but then we need to do that anyway. So before, the, uh, this is what the action that we want to do, okay? When can we do that? Where, when should this line be called? It should be called when the page has already been loaded and all the elements have been, all the DOM elements have been constructed. So actually we should put this, not, not just call it like this, like I did. I hope it worked, but uh, to, to do it in a step way fashion, but I didn't, it didn't. We can put that in a sort of a setup function So we cannot call it right now. We will call it later. We call it later. 
when the page is complete. So this is a function that should be called when the document, the DOM, is already being constructed. And uh, this is one of the events that the browser generates, an event that tells us that the page is ready. So actually, what you should do is the in to define this setup, uh, this setup function as a handler, document, document is the top level of the DOM. Dollar document is the jQuery object corresponding to the DOM. We should intercept or redefine the ready event on the DOM by saying uh, I want to call the setup function when the document is read. So our way of programming should always be uh, planning ahead. When something happens, call a function that will do some work. And in this case, when the document is ready, call the setup function. The setup function will register event handlers. And later, when the user will move the mouse, the event handler will fire and we'll call this other function, and so on. So in this case, we are, the risk is that we are defining a lot of different functions, and probably it will, will also be difficult to find the right names to all these functions. So what we usually do is uh, of avoid giving a name to this function and creating an anonymous function to be used here. Remember last time when I said the function, uh, fun the function keyword is strange because it defines a function and but also creates and returns an object, an object of type function. So what we should do here is what usually uh, this this should work, okay? But it's not normal JavaScript. I want on the ready event of the document to register a function handler. So I can define a function right on place, like this. I use the function keyword. I don't need a name to the function because it will only be defined and used only once. I may have some parameters. In, the ca in this case, I don't have any. And there's a body of the function immediately there, here. So I can open this body and write the event handler of the ready event. So I'm defining a throwaway function. This function will be defined. The reference of this function will be used to register the ready event of the document. And then the, this function will be forgotten. <laughs> So there's no other way to call this function because it doesn't have any name. It's strange. But it's a way to avoid creating many functions and then you don't know who calls who. So this, so this handler will have to find all the delete links. And then maybe, I don't know, change the background uh, or color to red so that we see if it works, okay? Let's comment all the rest so that it doesn't interfere. So everything else is commented. And a good semicolon there. And a good semicolon there. So let's try again. What's wrong with me?
what's wrong here? Uh, so the script is right. It will be executed. So what you see is that here the debugger has reached this point. It means that this event standard has been called. So we registered the event and the event already fired by the browser. So maybe let me there's something stupid that I don't understand I want to run them in the debugger okay we are here and what are these elements Here they are. So the elements variable actually contains the one five links, five delete links. Okay, so why is it not working? example selector sorry okay let's try it with something simple Maybe some attributes may not apply to some elements, but uh. trying stupid things because, because I'm a bit lost here do you see what I'm doing stupid or because It should be straightforward. Is there a point here? elements is a jQuery list and this list contains the right elements I made I may just using the wrong name or 
is that the horizontal color CSS. Okay. So Okay, so we can use so this should work. There are shorthand attributes in jQuery, but probably I don't remember the name, and I didn't look up. Uh, Okay, so I wanted to do very something very simple to show that it's that the elements are were modified, but I I, I was sucked into a, a syntax uh, of changing the style. Okay, so sorry for the time we lost. Let's go back to the, our delete elements. Then now. Okay, they are red. We don't. We didn't want to make them red. Okay, we want to assign an event handler on their mouse over. Okay, so if we look at jQuery, it tells us where's the doc jQuery page here. It tells us that we can attach event handler here. We can attach several event handlers. Um, to any element that can be registered, for example, the click event, the double click event, and we are looking for the mouse over event. We have this hover that can be used or mouse enter and mouse, o mouse over so my error before was i wrote on mouse over instead of mouse over okay and this is why i hate javascript because it doesn't tell you if, if a name doesn't exist it just fails um, and the mouse out event actually in javascript it's easier because if you look at the documentation we see that there is a mouse sorry a hover event that uh, will register immediately two handlers you see the hover event can register one handler for entering and the handler in and one handler for exiting for the element so we don't need to uh, write two separate functions so we have our delete elements and we can register the hover event on them So we don't need to save them. Hover requires registering two functions. One when we enter the element and the other when we exit the element. So when we enter the element, we define an anonymous function again. So like this. And another for exiting. So we have a strange syntax which inside the function call we have the definition of two separate functions 
one that will be executed when we enter and what will this do the that will we what will this do change the text of this warning so div of id warning text careful and when we get out of this element we do the same sorry div id warning empty text semicolon here semicolon there so it's a strange way of programming and if i reload this okay something is working something not so when i go here because because uh, let me check what text does in jquery uh, inside text so I get the combined text content of each element in a set including their descendants okay So div demo component will contain demonstration. Okay, ah, okay, okay. And the text can be used to set the content of each mesh element. In fact, it, it will set it. Oh, sorry, I didn't. I forgot to pass uh, an empty string there. So I, I was not passing any arguments. So this is another jQuery convention. If I don't have the argument in a function, it will return me the current value. If I put an argument, it will change the value to that, okay? So, and it's long debugging that because you need to redeploy the application, go to the page, reload it again, and so on. So now we recreated everything we had last time with jQuery. Uh, there's still one thing which is not working. I imagine that this careful would uh, be styled in bootstrap style Probably the class Bootstrap free warning Like this I wanted to have and uh, Like this so it's not uh, it's alert warning roll alert like that so i need to change the style on the template uh, on the index so it's not just warning but it's a more complex bootstrap class for showing this div i didn't change the id so the javascript doesn't need to to be changed No, it's not a warning it was an error sorry where is that uh, here no it's a danger okay warning was yellow and danger is red so in my mind i had red but i copied the danger okay so again the html danger Redeploy. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so we reload it. Okay, so now what we need to do is again to modify this to uh, hide it when uh, the, the function is not uh, needed. So, for example, 
we want to hide it at the beginning so this if I'm not wrong there's an hide method in jQuery and then we need to hide it after clearing it and showing it after writing so we don't know so we don't we will get rid of the empty element so it's not shown here because it's hidden we show and put some content and we'll remove the content and hide it so hmm? in this uh, uh we need to have we have uh, ac actually three contexts uh, in our mind at the same time what we want to do in the javascript algorithm and then all the methods in jquery for finding elements uh, and modifying them and all the bootstrap styles to make uh, the right appearance so we we sh you should avoid the just trust in your memory and always go to the documentation uh, jquery also have a chaining syntax because usually you can chain more operation one after the other so you avoid re querying again the same selector because every method usually returns uh, its uh, object on which it was called okay um so it should do the same but with less code So we load it has the same behavior but with less code so one one comment i wanted to make here i wanted to get to this point to make this comment the order in which these instructions are executed has nothing to do with the order of writing this code right because at the beginning when we load the page the only code that is executed is this one like this register and event handler all the rest of the code is not being executed now when we include the script okay at the bottom of the page after we include the script the browser works a bit uh, to construct the dom of the page that was initially it was not working you know when we had this function here it, it was not working because it was too early the script was just included but the dom was not constructed yet so this selector had nothing to work with the dom was not ready yet the data structure was not ready yet and so we ne we must delay the management of the dom until the page is loaded so all the code will execute only after the document is read when the document is so we include the script uh, the script will execute this function and then wait go to sleep after a while milliseconds the browser will say the dom is ready and so it will call the event tender for the dom ready event this event tender is our anonymous function so at that point it will execute whatever is inside sorry whatever is inside this function starting here and closing there between these closing round uh, brace okay this is executed and what gets executed here only two instructions one is hide this div i we want to do it now at the beginning after the page is loaded and uh, hover register a couple of event tenders of course for doing that all these delete links uh, should be uh, available if for some reason and we'll see which are the reasons later uh, these uh, delete links uh, should uh, change maybe we add a new one maybe we add a new task or we delete a new task uh, we should change this registration but it's uh, for uh, for the next step so when the document is ready we, we execute these two instructions this one and this one the other two are not looked at they are just the function is just parsed and put away 
then whenever the mouse goes over one of the links uh, this function is called and whenever the mouse goes out of the link of a link uh, this function is called so the order in which the functions are called uh, depends on the the actions of the user so this is a sort of a reactive programming all our code reacts on something else uh, happening on the browser loading the page uh, or on the user mov moving the mouse and so on mm? so in a complex page we will have uh, several many event tender event enders in our page they will do different things uh, asynchronously we don't know in which order they will be called we don't know okay uh, we only know which are the handles to which we are touching them so if we want uh, we can use this uh, by the way this uh, anonymous function definition here function round parentheses with parameters if we need some any parameters and then braces with the body uh, if we want to reuse the same function in many places of course we can always declare a, a regular function okay but since we have so many small event tenders here and there usually the the inline anonymous style is preferred is used more than the other okay okay so we can remove the old code this one is shorter and after a bit uh, of understanding this mechanism uh, of how jQuery mangles the DOM, but, but especially how the, all the event tenders work, uh, it's also easier to read. Right now, oh, okay, we made it better. We used Bootstrap, we used jQuery. We didn't uh, change the functionality of what we are doing. Okay. Um, we could. Uh, make some other improvements like uh, when the user clicks on the delete button maybe ask for confirmation or do some other actions hmm? but that will not change uh, substantially the behavior of the application so right now we are using client-side programming just to make the page more interactive but it's only the page when the user clicks on delete uh, the delete goes to the server and a new page is generated okay but since we have all this intelligence here we could do better we could try to separate the server from the front end the idea is that right now we i have this front end page in this application which is a traditional application that does oh sorry it's not this one yeah uh, that is the index here with the if i delete in something this method will be called and this method will directly delete the task and then re redirect the browser to the index page again so the index page is reloaded every time from zero and uh, reloading the index page uh, i'm reloading also the javascript and the javascript has to re-register all the event tenders and so on from scratch from zero but uh, some weeks ago we also did a rest server that implemented all the operations on the task list uh, as a as an api and we learned how to call these apis from python code so let's make it a, a step forward could we call this api from our javascript code so the idea is that when i'm this i am here in this code i could re register I'm talking always for the delete button because it's easier the insert is more work but if i could register the click event and if we could register the clicks of event uh, with a function 
where I call a REST API for um, deleting an item in the JavaScript page so in this way I am still on the same page and in JavaScript I will call a function from a web server it may be my web server but from JavaScript code it doesn't matter I'm calling a REST API and and JavaScript can be done we'll see next time uh, on Thursday how to do that and from the JavaScript code I order uh, I ask or order the website the web server the application the API server to do an operation while remaining on the same page I'm not changing the page I'm not reloading anything I'm just calling an external service an external API service from my code in JavaScript hmm? so all the behavior uh, all the these uh, routes that are needed for handling the application in a traditional way with a server-based architecture are not needed anymore we only need one index that will deliver the page and all the JavaScript code we will implement all the functions in the JavaScript code and whenever this function some function need to change some data behind they will call a REST server so we will delete these routes and in, in their place insert uh, the REST server APIs that we will take from the lab 6 okay so from the JavaScript code we will call just a REST API so the the front end will be only one page with all the JavaScript code we don't need to implement any navigation any routes uh, for user navigation everything will be done in one page in many cases they call them single page applications because an application where all the content is just done obtained by modifying the page and then I execute the function in the in the background the only issue that remains here is that uh, when I click delete here if I click now that this will call in the future a REST API that will delete this row from the server but it will still be shown in this page so we also need to delete the front-end representation so they need to be synchronized so maybe I can reload only this part of the page probably if I want or just I need to replicate on the visual page what happens on the database if I insert something and this button insert will call the insert API with a, with a post call to insert a new task we already have the, that REST API that the task will be added in the database but it will not show up immediately here until we add it manually or reload this part this div so we may have some reloading or resynchronizing from the front end and the back end to do so it's more complex for us to, to imagine because we have in the traditional uh, mechanism there's only one page at a time that we are creating right now we are we have only one container with a lot of asynchronous operations that are happening okay so on Thursday we will build uh, on top of this uh, and try to I will try to do the first step uh, uh, here from 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 everybody and then we can use uh, some time also to let you work and try to implement some other functions uh, once we understand the pattern okay the first step that I will do on a, on a on github uh, before Thursday so maybe have a look before the class on Thursday I will create a project okay in which I will uh, merge the rest server and this front-end page it will be only one flash project that well, it will be one route for the index and all the uh, rest API server we don't need anymore the the old routes and the old uh, say application uh, uh, functions okay so for now it's all uh, we can move to the to the lab uh, and it's a supervised work group uh, so we can work and uh, can we can give some you some help on your projects